It only took watching a handful of summoning salt videos for me to realize, whoa, this is amazing. I want to do that. So I decided that this year, in 2024, I would set a world record for a speedrun. There are two strategies for setting a speedrun world record. The first is to be intensely godlike at the video game, sadly I am but immortal, and the second is to pull a Jaden animations or a Curtis Connor and compete in a speedrun that has little to no active community whatsoever. Unfortunately, as someone who is working full time, is in college, is learning a new skill to pick up a new career, is making videos again, and is trying to get to read 52 books this year, I just don't have the time to spend weeks or months or even like a year trying to shave frames or seconds off of potential speedrun time. So you can bet I'm going to go with the Jaden Animations route by aiming for a game that has no speedrun community for it. Picking the game was a feat in itself because as we've already established, I can't pick a game that's too popular or has too much heat on it because I simply cannot compete with this. Second, I don't want the world record to have to be too long. I don't want the speed run to be 30, 40, 50 minutes long because I think that would drive me insane if every time I've sunk 30 minutes into the speed run attempt, I mess up and realize, oh shit, that's 30 minutes gone. I have to start over. I'm very well aware of my limitations. I respect speedrunners because they will do that every single day for months on end. And I know that after a week of that, I would break my own arm. And taking a look at my minute Steam collection yielded unpromising results. Of my 23 games, these can't be speedrun. I don't want to set a world record for a wholesome dating sim. These have too much competition. I don't even know how a speedrun would work for this. And I simply refuse to even interact with this one. Oh, oh, no, oh, oh no, 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 oh god! That leaves us with one viable option. Let's Revolution. Poetically, Let's Revolution was gifted to me by a friend who thought I would like it. And I did. For 65 minutes. Let's Revolution is like someone took a look at Minesweeper and thought, listen, this would be cool, but what if we made it a roguelite where the mines are enemy soldiers belonging to a villainous king? And you're a revolutionary warrior as opposed to, you know, like a mouse cursor. You beat enemies, earn money, buy power-ups, find the king each level, and eventually defeat him. It's a grand old time. It's a great game. Now, despite my insistence that I would be setting a world record simply by submitting a time for a game with no community, there is one active player and, by default, world record holder for Let's Revolution. Legalize Leak. And Legalized League is no slouch. His world record for this game is 5 minutes, 19 seconds, and 12 milliseconds. Okay, 520, dude. 10 seconds quicker. Let's go. For context, that's nearly half the time required for the speedrun achievement that the game has, which has you beat the game in 10 minutes or fewer. League is playing with the Witch, a character who is crucial to the speedrun for reasons I'll explain later, and is also a character I just have not unlocked yet. And I can only unlock characters by getting to level 5 of any playthrough, so before I can even attempt the speedrun, I have to use other characters to just play the game. So let's play the game. So. I'm apparently not very good at this game. <laughs> In fact, I wasn't even sure how to unlock characters because I was performing so badly so many times in a row that I just wasn't making enough progress to discern how. I later discovered that you have to get to at least level 5 to get a little jewel, and the more jewels you get, the closer you are to unlocking either skills or characters. And I just wasn't getting to level 5 enough for me to put together a pattern to recognize, oh, that's how I unlock characters. 
At this point, I figured now would be a good time to call my friend, Brady, the one who had given me this game in the first place, and who presumably knows a fair bit more about how to be not as shit as I have been so far. Okay, so I'm playing Let's Revolution. I just lost like seven games in a row. Do I just suck? Identify your most important skill and upgrade and reduce its cost as much as possible. My issue I keep running into is that the king is always going to be at the end of the road. And playing it like Minesweeper is like, okay, I know where the road is, but on the road there are enemies, but also on the road there's the king. So I gotta find the road, but sometimes if I find the road, I get hit. That's why you need to find like the end of the road. You need to logic your way, your way there. You're playing Minesweeper like you're trying to find the one mine. Because every end space in the road is safe. You do not need to engage with the enemies at all. Alright. Alright, cool, cool. I've been playing this game wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I slowly got better. I wasn't amazing, mind you, but I was at least dying on level 5 or later, which meant I was getting enough green jewels to get closer and closer to unlocking the witch. And as I slowly but surely unlocked each character, I stopped being bad at the game with one character and started being kind of okay at the game with multiple until finally. Here is why playing with the witch is such a necessity. Of all the characters, she has the ability to reveal the most squares at a time. Trooper, my favorite character to play with, can reveal up to 8 on a good day, but more realistically only reveals 4 or 5. Charger, meanwhile, only reveals one square at a time and can't even move diagonally. The Shadow and the Hunter perform best by hiding squares rather than revealing them, and the Oracle excels at just revealing one safe square at a time. The Witch's Pyrokinesis starts out only being able to reveal four squares at a time in a ray pattern, but every time you go to the gym you have a chance to upgrade your Pyrokinesis range from four squares to nine to sixteen. But the range of our Pyrokinesis isn't the only thing that we're hoping to upgrade though. If we take faith in Legalized Leak's commentary during his speedrun- I really need something with two damage. I mean, I'll, I'll look in the shops and stuff, but that's why I'm still opening treasure chests. I don't need the money, but I really need something with 2 damage. We're also going to be looking for any spells, upgrades, or items that allow us to do 2 damage or more. A quintessential upgrade that we're going to get is the surprise upgrade, which lets us do 2 damage to any hidden enemies that we hit. But we're also going to be looking for the fireball spell, which does 2 damage, and the blunderbuss, scroll of lightning, and exploding pineapple, the latter of which does 3 damage. The lightning spell also eventually does 2 damage, but it requires 3 upgrades, and I'm just not going to rely on that for this speedrun. This could either be a foreshadowing moment, or we never think about it again. I, I don't know. Also, one more item that would be useful to find is the strength potion, because the strength potion Let's me deal one more damage for five turns. The reason we're looking for two damage options is because the last level of this game requires that we face off directly against the king, who has six hearts. Every time the king is hit by an individual spell, no matter how much damage he takes from that hit, an unavoidable cutscene plays. So if we hit him six times for one damage each, we're going to lose a lot more time than if we just find ways to hit him for 2 damage each time and only have to hit him 3 times. All of the treasure chests on the last level will carry a bubble zooka, which deal 2 damage each, but I don't want to have to spend time bouncing around the map looking for those if I don't have to. So yeah, that's all the prep work out of the way. I unlocked the witch, I have a general idea of what I want to do, so let's get a world record. The warm-up game that I played on a whim at like 5am actually earned me a sub 10, which is enough to at least get the speedrunning achievement that the game gives you, so that was cool. And then a few days later, after I got my live split up and running, and after I had my mental breakdown setting it up, I got an 802, which is like two whole minutes faster basically. <laughs>
Going from not even being able to consistently get to the fifth level of the game, then being able to get the speedrunning achievement that the game gives you, and then being able to shave like a minute or two off of that, that's exciting. And it really makes me look forward to the journey that I have ahead of me. And the journey was rocky initially. I was making lots of silly mistakes. So I need to find the surprise. I found the surprise, but I can't afford it. Also, despite understanding that the game is based on Minesweeper and uses essentially the same mechanics as Minesweeper, I refused to look at the numbers on the tiles for the longest time. Where the fuck is he? Another embarrassing mistake I would often make would be firing pyrokinesis onto a bunch of squares I've already revealed. Galir, isn't that embarrassing? Every time you squeeze my hand, it breaks several small bones. <laughs> but right here, I hit six squares that have already been hit, and I only reveal three. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was trying to kill the plant, but I shouldn't be focused on the enemies. I should be trying to find the king. And the same thing happens here, here, and here. I'm just retreading all the ground. Robert Frost would be so disappointed. I also wasn't keeping a close enough eye on my health sometimes. Oh shit, oh I messed up. But despite all of the mistakes that I was making, I was still playing every day and improving as a result. Every few days, I was getting a new personal best. For example, on this run, I got to the smith, tried to refresh to search for the surprise, Realized if I refreshed one more time, and even if the surprise showed up, it cost three gold. I would have two gold left over. Four minus two is two. So I left and decided to just go along with the rest of the level. Knowing when to cut your losses is an important skill. On round three, not only did I find the scroll of lightning. Oh, that's okay. That's gonna be good. I also ended it nine seconds ahead, and then I used the majority of my funds to purchase surprise, and it's. Always a bit of a task trying to find surprise. I've gone entire runs without being able to get surprise. Level 7 was a little bit rough. When I wasn't able to find the king, I kind of panicked. What? Where is he? Oh my god. Where? Oh, oh he's all the way down here. Okay. With that being said, I must have been doing something right because I ended level 7 30 seconds ahead, and level 8 widened the gap to 47.4 seconds. By the start of level 9, Legalized Leaks world record has already taken place, but I'm aiming for a personal best here. Healing is a tricky balance that I don't think I can say I ever really got the hang of. Every time you stop by Chobi's shop to heal, you are a effectively wasting time. It's better to just not get hit. But it's also a shame to have one heart left on the final level and then die as a result. I ended level 9 almost a minute ahead. Oh, this is a pretty good time. So it would take a tragic, colossal fuck up for me to not get a personal best. How often have you had colossal huge fuck ups? On the final level, I utilized the Scroll of Lightning. I'm glad I remembered I had it. I was almost confident past me had forgotten about it. I'm gonna use the Scroll of Lightning on him. Then we're gonna go up here to get a bazooka. Shoot him with it immediately. And the bazookas, while I don't want to hop around trying to find them, if I uncover them with pyrokinesis, they're great to get. A consistent two damage each time, and you can hit any target from anywhere on the board. And I say any target, I mean the king. I don't know why you would be hitting anyone who's not the king. I mean, want to try to find the other bazooka wherever it is. Okay, or, or we just hit him. Or we just, okay, never mind, I heal myself. And moments like that are kind of why trying to find the bazooka isn't really worth it if you haven't uncovered it with your pyro. But by this point, I decided to hitting him with the pyro twice, even though it would result in two cutscenes instead of one, and even though I would have to wait for my pyrokinesis to recharge, would be faster. I'm just gonna go for it, I'm just gonna hit him. So the reason I want to find the other items instead is because every time I move, I take damage. <laughs> oh, not every time I move, but every time I move, it takes an action. Uh, and uh, enemies 
hit me after like a certain number of actions happen. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get hit. But that's my new best time. No. I shaved like a minute off my last hey. best time. Wow! After I studied my previous runs and realized, oh my god, I'm a fucking idiot, and stopped doing fucking idiot things, I got a 7 11 38. And on the very next game I played, I got it down to 7 minutes flat. Yes! Alright. And in fact, it only took me a few more days to get below 7 minutes, all the way down. The 619 personal best? Uh, I feel so lightheaded. It's still a whole minute away from the world record, but I think I can pinpoint some areas that I could do a lot better in. But that was a huge improvement, huge. I think if I just keep playing like an hour or so every day, we got this. Unfortunately, I was trying to squeeze that hour or so a day into very inconvenient parts of my schedule. For example, I decided to engage in legitimate attempts at speedruns while I was clocked in at work. And listen, while working in a liquor store does offer a bit more freedom than most 9 to 5s, I still have to deal with the very real possibility of a customer walking in, as happened with this attempt. Attempt 65 started very promising and then stopped being promising very quickly. I was leaving level 4 24 seconds behind, and I managed to bring that down to 15 by level 5, along with the discovery of a blunderbuss. And I was able to shave that time down even further by level 6, which saw me get 6 seconds ahead. And we're back, and we're back, and we're back. But then, balls deep in level 7, I was jolted out of my reverie by a sound I have come to loathe. Hello. As I offer exemplary customer service. Are you guys looking for anything specific? Cognac. We don't have any cognac. Yeah. No, we don't. The store down the street does though. I realize I'm not necessarily on world record pace, but I can knock my 619 personal best out of the water and very realistically get a sub six. So I'm committed. Nearing the end of level 8, a well-placed hierokinesis reveals where the king should be, but before I can teleport there, I take enough hits to make me concerned. And I take a few too many seconds deciding between teleporting to where the king would be and healing at Trovi's shop where I'm standing right then. Those few seconds, they start to add up. My 23 second lead shrinks down to 5 seconds. Do you have any backups in mind? And by the end of level 9, with all the stress mounting and building up, I've lost my lead completely and am now behind. But that doesn't mean this is over. It took me 50 seconds to complete the final round in my personal best, in my 619. So it shouldn't take me that long to complete the final level this time around, right? Well... Go ahead. I think in that moment, I was like, I shouldn't be angry at this person. They walked into a store to exchange money for goods and services. It, it's not crazy that they would expect that to occur. It took me a couple seconds to ring them up, and I was counting every single one of those seconds. I teleported to an area of the map that I assumed would be safe, and was within pyro distance of the king, so I shot him and managed to unveil a bubblezooka in the process. Right, have a good one. Quickly used to that. But they did leave, and while they were leaving, I saw that the timer had turned red. Beating my personal best of 619 was now out of reach. But I figured I would at least see this playthrough through. Twelve point seven seconds. Twelve point seven seconds is what separated that run from my personal best. I did bring up my editing software to see if there were twelve point seven seconds to be found somewhere, but I figured it didn't matter. Uh, it it just didn't happen. I had twelve point seven seconds to realize that I should definitely stop trying to speedrun at work. But even confining the 
speedrun attempts to areas where I knew I would have time and I wouldn't be interrupted didn't help and I soon saw the number of runs I was competing in reach triple digits. But at this point you're probably wondering, Quinn, we've been seeing lots of video footage of your attempts and you keep talking about the 619. Why haven't we seen the 619? Well, let me tell you about the worst day of my life. I'm absolutely devastated because I was editing the video and I realized that my 619, my personal best, the only time I have that's closest to the world record right now, is also the only video file that I was screen recording that got corrupted somehow. So I, I just don't have footage of the 619. And then I was like, I'm just going to do some speed runs anyway, because I'll just see if I can get better. And my 103rd run was on such a great pace. Not world record pace, but I was 30 seconds ahead on round eight. And I got so excited that I did not realize I only had two health left and I died. No, no, oh no. With a health potion in my inventory. So I'm going to try again because that was a great run and I think we could get it again. So let's keep doing this, let's keep playing. <gasps> oh my god. At 615, which is my personal best, but more importantly, is a personal best that I have video evidence for. I want to cry. I, I've had an emotional day today. <laughs> my first sub 6 actually came on the heels of two of my worst runs ever. The sub 6 was actually my third attempt today. I'm filming like immediately after because I'm giddy. But my first run I had to restart early just because I got hit twice on really stupid mistakes. And on run 111, I just straight up died. Straight up died on level 4. So I came into my sub 6 thinking, eh, today's just not my day, but I'll get some practice under my belt. But while I was able to get the surprise upgrade pretty early on in round 1, I was still 4 seconds behind. So I don't think my hopes were high for this run. But despite the fact that I was several seconds behind, you can't underestimate getting surprise and pyrokinesis upgrades within the first two levels. On round 3, I basically accidentally stumbled onto the king. And round four, I pulled ahead by solid seven seconds, almost accidentally as well. I think subconsciously, I've been realizing that I know where the game likes to hide the king. He's usually farthest away from where you start, and he's going to be on the edge of the board. Level five, I upgraded my pyrokinesis again, and with that upgrade, revealed the king in a huge fiery blast. Amazing. I kind of lost the huge cushion of time that I got in level four, but I was still ahead by level five. And at this point of the game, I'm starting to think of the maps as four separate quadrants. I check one with pyrokinesis, I check the other, and if the king's not there, I kind of at least have a general idea of where he is. And with pyrokinesis, that's all I really need, is a general idea. Now at this point, I've got my cushion back. I am now a full 10 seconds ahead. <coughs> and at level 7, while I do still end the level ahead, I think I could have saved time by not going to the smith. I already have surprise. I don't think I need to get fireball. I got it here. But it's sort of too late in the game to upgrade it to doing 2 damage. Level 8, I have to start out by revealing enemies in order to get my energy back. 
But I found the king so fast, launching me from 5 seconds ahead to 20. And level 9 is where the magic happens. I start in the bottom left quadrant, which means the king is not going to be there. I expose enough of the upper left quadrant to realize that he's not going to be there either. So I dig around in the bottom right quadrant for a little bit. And then I reveal enough of the upper right quadrant to realize he's gonna be there. Which puts me 41 seconds ahead. And listen, while I do great in the final level, there's a big mistake that I should have avoided. I start this level by revealing enemies to get energy back. And yeah, I end up getting full energy, but I should have just done this last level where revealing enemies wouldn't have mattered. But because I did it at the start of this level, I now have to begin the level with three people with clocks ticking down to when they will next attack me, as opposed to just the king and this trumpeteer. And while I'm nearly at full health, that's not going to matter if everyone attacks me at least once. And lo and behold, after attacking the king and not revealing any bubble zookas, almost immediately I am down to one health. And I don't have any health potions, there aren't any shops in the final level, but there is one thing that could potentially stave off my death. The Lucky Clover. And aside from that, I can't spam my pyrokinesis every turn, I have to wait for it to load up. And if I wait for it to load up, guess what else is loading up? The enemy's attacks. So at this point, I am kind of glad I got Fireball, because it's at least something that has a separate countdown from my Pyrokinesis. Luckily, I stumble upon a Bubblezooka, launch it at the king, and give myself a bit more breathing room. And this really made me realize that luck is such a huge part of this speedrun, because the king landed right back within Pyrokinesis range. At this point, he has two health left, and I only have one. Which means I could go searching for a Bubblezooka, which will end the game now, but could also end the game now if I land on an enemy. So I use the Lucky Clover to reset everyone's clocks, and I just use my Fireball to hit the king for one damage. And by that point, the timer on my Pyrokinesis had ended, and I was able to blast him one final time, for a time of 5.45.61. Oh, oh, oh! oh my god! <laughs> 30 seconds away from the world record. So yeah, huge victory for me, but I'm also left to wonder, what's in those 30 seconds? I mean, let's just get this out of the way now. Leak is so fucking fast. He clicks so quickly. It's annoying. I've improved a lot at this game. I've played over 100 times, but when I compare my clicking speed to Leak's, he makes me look like a wounded gazelle. Granted, my speed could probably be resolved by me, you know, buying an actual mouse for my laptop and not using a mouse pad, but I'm not going to purchase a wireless mouse just to beat a world record. And also, there's a part of me that would kind of be disappointed if I purchased the wireless mouse and then I play my first speedrun and then I beat Leak's time. So we're kind of in a limbo there. So what can I do faster than Leak? At a certain point of his speedrun, Leek knew that he was ahead by a lot. Since we saved so much time on this level, we might as well open everything. That was not what I needed. And I've been going out of my way not to make unnecessary stops. However, he's so much better than me at some other things. First, he's very methodical about where he's casting his pyrokinesis. Also, Leek is just so responsible. He uses his dark energy at the end of a level, basically once he's at 10 energy or lower. He was not getting hit as often as I was, and didn't have to worry about his health as much, and as a result didn't have to worry about whether he would have to stop at Chobi's shop to get healed as often as I was. And in addition to having more health, meaning you don't have to worry as much about getting hit, having more health means you also didn't get hit by enemies, which means you didn't have to wait for their attack cutscenes to end. And finally, Leek was just making decisions faster than I was. Even if they were bad decisions, he at least got them over with quickly. Wrong direction. But I get surprised and we all forget about that this happened. I, on the other hand, would spend too many half seconds wondering if the thing I was about to do was the right thing to do, 
only to either make the decision or decide it wasn't. So let's see if this actually does anything for me. All right, yes, I do give myself a little clap, and yes, I do try to wake up my sleeping girlfriend to tell her that I got a new personal best, but what do you want from me? I just got three seconds away from the world record, and I was pumped. And me missing the world record by three seconds didn't make me upset. It made me excited at the fact that I would definitely be getting it soon, and that it might happen sooner than I thought, because the very next day, just two games later, I want to start filming this now, because I may have just gotten the world record, or it may have just beat my PV, but I do not know, because I messed up my splits. I hit the button too early, which means that the timer thinks I got a world record, even though I didn't. I, or maybe I didn't. I, or maybe I did. I don't know. I was watching uh, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, uh, and I thought I made history, but it turns out I hit the space bar one too many times. So we're going to see. We're going to find out. By this point, I can recognize the symbols for pyrokinesis and surprise from a mile away. So by level 5, I've quickly gotten them all. Level 7 sees a bit of push and pull. I fall behind for the first time since level 1, but at the cost of getting the most powerful item in the game. Level 8 is where it starts to fall apart, because at the same time as me pressing the teleport button, I guess I must have pressed the spacebar to end my splits. No, oh no. The final level required me to hit the king just three times. I knew it had to have been a fast time because I didn't have to wait for anything to load. And because I usually hit him four times and not three. But I wouldn't know until I edited the attempt. No, the, oh, we have to check that out. We have to check that out. I don't know. Thankfully, or maybe not, I don't know. I don't think I would have wanted to get the world record on a run where I messed up my live split. As it stands, I got a 521, which is a second faster than my personal best. So we'll keep it. <laughs> but I freaked out. Turns out this isn't anything. This, this isn't anything going on. We did not make history right now. And it would take nearly 30 more attempts until our next chance at making history. I find pyrokinesis very quickly on the first level, and then despite my better instincts telling me not to, I did make an attempt to find surprise on the second level, despite how difficult it has been to get it this early. Naturally, didn't find it, so I continued on. I upgraded pyrokinesis to full on the fourth level, and because I hadn't been hit yet, I was able to avoid having to waste time healing on level 5, so I left 20 seconds ahead. By level 6, I finally have enough gold to reliably refresh and find surprise at the smith, and I am able to successfully do so, even though I kind of misclick trying to get there. And while I go down from 19 seconds to 12 seconds ahead, I still consider that good pace because honestly, you're not ahead until you've gotten all of the upgrades that you need. I also managed to find a scroll of Armageddon, which attacks everyone on the board for one damage. On level 8, I'm lucky enough to find a couple of zero squares that I could teleport to. And because the only enemy on the board is a trumpeteer, I can just zag back and forth in order to recharge my pyrokinesis without much fear of being attacked, because the trumpeteer doesn't attack, they just reveal enemies. But despite how quickly I thought I found the king, I still ended up leaving the level just under a second behind. After being ahead for the entire game, I've started to slip. Just a little bit. And on level 9, I, I panicked. What can I say? I panicked. I revealed too many enemies and saw that things could go very badly for me very quickly. So I used the Scroll of Armageddon to clear out the board. 
and then managed to find the king. But due to my panic, or really any of the other small mistakes I could have been making throughout this speedrun, that just under a second behind was a chink in my armor that started to widen into a much larger crack. As seeing as I was on the final level, I didn't have much time to go to the blacksmith, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I had to fight on this battlefield, no time to repair the crack in my armor. Just me, the king, and his retinue of soldiers. I still have two health potions, neither of which I used, so that can be helpful, but I don't have any two damage weapons. The only ones I can use are going to be sprinkled across the board. I just have to find them first. But in this house, we multitask. So as I find two bubble zookas, I also injure the king. Five health left. And not only does my pyrokinesis reveal two bubble zookas and damage the king, it also only reveals one soldier. One bubble zooka is only a square away, so I hop over, grab it, launch it, three health left. I teleport twice, even though hopping diagonally three times could have been faster, but I grab the final bazooka I see, launch that the king, one heart remaining, one pyrokinesis away from sending this man to his grave. And after the king engages in his laying an explosive egg cutscene, he does me the courtesy of landing only four squares away within pyrokinesis range. To cast pyrokinesis, I have to use dark energy, which reveals three more enemies on the board, but it doesn't matter. We hit the king one final time. Speaking of time, what is our time? 49 milliseconds. 49 milliseconds, and I can say this for the first time, not away from Legalized League's record, ahead of. It took me basically that much time and a smidgen more to realize that the reason my time was blue wasn't because I had gotten a new personal best, it was because I had gotten the world record, which was also my personal best. And for most of the run, I was thinking, ah, I'll, I'll only be happy if I have a conclusive win, if I win by five seconds or more. But let me tell you the absolute joy I felt after two months of grinding and being able to get just even under a second ahead. I was ecstatic. <laughs> like, I, I loved watching speedrun videos. I've been so entertained by them. I loved watching Point Crow speedrun Breath of the Wild and doing it blindfolded. I loved watching summoning salts videos that make speedruns turn into a saga. I loved watching Ludwig get the speedrun record on all of the Mario Party superstar mini games. And I assume like good for them. Like that's great. That's awesome. I assume when I get mine, it'll feel good too. But nothing compares, very little compares to the joy of having expended so much effort and time into something so mundane as a video game and being able to say that you are the recorded best in the world at a portion of it. It makes me want to do it over and over and over again. I don't see this being my last speedrun. In fact, if you look on speedrun.com and search up Last Revolution right now, not only will you see my name at the top of the leaderboard, you'll see that that time is even lower than the one I show you right here. If you want to see how I did that, you can go ahead and check out my Patreon. But yes, now that I've like set my first world record speedrun, I don't think I'm going to keep making videos about them consistently, but you can bet that during my free time, I'll be practicing speedruns for all of the games I showed earlier in the video that I brushed off as being too difficult or too long or having too much competition. As for Let's Revolution, I'm not stopping until I get sub 5. I've messaged Legalized Leak, and he seems like he's down to have a little bit more competition as well. So we'll see whose name is at the top of that leaderboard in a few days, in a few weeks, in a few months. Heck, I hope we get a third or fourth or even fifth name on there. 
I don't know, buy Let's Revolution. Uh, it's 20 bucks on Steam? I don't remember. But it's very fun. I've sunk in hours into this game. And even though it was for this video, and even though it was for a speedrun attempt, every time I played was fun. Like, there was no part of this video that was really like, oh, and it was such a slog getting through all of these. There were parts where I felt defeated, but the game's nature encouraged me to keep coming back again and again and again. But whether it's Let's Revolution or a different video game entirely, or even just another aspect of your life, I challenge you to try to be the best at it, even if it's something small, because being able to say that you're the best at something, even if no one in the world is really doing it, it's still very rewarding. So, I hope you guys go out there and give it a shot. Anyway, thank you to my patrons, Avila, Madeline Gope, Jonathan Youngblood, and Alexis LaRoche-Marin for supporting. Goodbye.